Hey everybody, this is apparently, and uh, for this video, this is going to be the behind the scenes look at the Yu Yu Hakusho video. We're going to be looking at the uh, kind of Premiere Pro file and all these little weird things I've got going on here, uh, which I might make a little bigger. A lot of these little folders. Uh, I'll also look at the kind of After Effects. Um, it'll turn down like a quarter just to make things a little easier. Maybe like a third. Um, for but it's a kind of the more visual aspects and obviously sound for uh, the video because well we did the self analysis last time and this is more behind the scenes of what I did, why I did what I did to some extent. Uh, probably a lot shorter of a video, I would assume. Uh, largely because I don't necessarily think I need to spend that much time. Um, anyway, uh, I think the first thing to really look at here is a lot of the folders I have over here. So one of the very, very important things to really do, and uh, I think the next projects are a lot more organized, where you have here is like you have a bunch of like little nests and stuff, uh, which I can like. I have like a little thing where I can. Oh, that's unfortunate. I think it went into. That did. I love that. We love that. There we go. Um, for folders, it's gonna be a lot more organized moving forward. This is this is the first attempt back. Obviously, and there's like some images. There's um background we kind of use for a lot of the video. Uh, this one, which is kind of moving, as you already know. Uh, that's, uh, behind. The the main footage always has a bit of an alpha glow. So it has this uh, little darkness in the background to make it kind of come off. If you turn it off, it uh, just kind of stays there. Where here, it's like a more of a, a placement. You know, it's, it's clearly set above rather than kind of like segmented into it, if that makes sense. They're very different, uh, and it separates them. And I think I I always like that personally. Uh, when I'm doing the more visual stuff, or like when I'm half footage on top of something, I always like to make it much more discernible. Uh, there's like two things happening here: the main footage, and there's the background that moves. Um, but for the folders, it's just like there's a lot of stuff. There's you know I have all of these images that I use. Um, obviously the footage, um, you know, a little hard knock life, uh, footage in particular for that one little bit, it says something in Japanese I can't read, um, I was 43, which I think was the bang at the end of the video, um, this one, don't die, and then there's like a little bang at the end, there it is, it was right there, oh, you saw it, we don't need to go into it. Uh, music, of course, uh, there's a lot more segmented into the sections for which the music appears. Uh, obviously, these are some more sound effects because I don't think I made a sound effect um, folder for some reason. Um, in the future, I actually decided to separate um, each like folder would be the the kind of the chapter or the top, like that section, and then I would have like you know After Effects footage, image, music, and script. Well, less so script sequences, title text for that one section. Uh, and you would open up the folder, and then it's like boom, all these things for that one, which I think works a lot better, and I think it's a lot more organized. It also helps give more space for this, so I can turn it off and on again. Um, anyway, we could look at look at the cool stuff we got going on here. Um, ooh. yeah, there's all these little pieces. I think I'm missing the top one. That's fine. Um, so we have kind of like a lot of sections here. I'll look at look much closer. Little hey dot png uh, a nest which you can click into and it has this little flashing arrow 
Um, I thought this was. I guess it's like I the way I did it here was I just did opacity over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, which is way longer. Where I could have done something out of this, which would I think would have been a lot easier to accomplish. But it's fine. It's whatever. Um. <laughs> A lot of it's just like um, I actually do like this effect a lot, where it just kind of bops in like that. And a lot of that's done with using this kind of transform effect. You can look into uh, right here, and you could kind of set it where it's like here's. I think position is going to remain consistent, sort of, uh, except for when it leaves the screen. You'll see, Comment. Yeah, you'll see it leave the screen there. Um, and then you have it set to, like, it doesn't exist yet before this frame that's on, and it's point 0.1, then it goes to the bigger one, small one, uh, and, like, a couple frames, and, like, two frames. Oh, 19.1. And then usually this one's a longer one. And this time it's only two. Normally I like to actually have that, f the beginning process be much longer or at least longer in regards to like frames it'd be like seven frames instead of like just two here uh which you know it's fine comment and subscribe it's whatever um i don't think i would ever i think i mentioned this in the self-analysis potentially but i i don't right. think i like using hey. black screen i think i i definitely prefer white you know, um oh, compared work. to black or or having it on like a like a white background compared to black. I think that works a lot better. I think there's more things I can do. Usually like like shadow. I could have like a drop shadow or something and it make it a little bit more stand out, a little bit more visually appealing. Um which is fine. And then we have the the introduction sessions, la 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 on title drops, which I think I wanted to kind of have the title drop at like the right moment. So here it's like when the screen starts to move or right or like a little bit after. Well, I mean, technically, I guess it starts to appear right when the screen moves. Um, It's just like, at, let's see, what is it? It's like the first frame of it moving, it's a zero and it slowly picks up as the camera kind of moves towards. And then obviously it'll switch. Nice. Um, one of the things I really wanted to work on and improve, I think, for, for, for videos in general, but one of the things I kind of had difficulty in doing when I was working on this video was trying to find a way to potentially have, like, the main footage we're using in, like, a more, like, displayed in a more interesting way and kind of used in a more interesting way rather than just have it appear on screen, which, to be fair, is fine. And I think it works perfectly, and I think it's it's good um, to have it like that. <coughs> Sorry, I think I think that works. I think using the footage that way is normal. It's fine. Everybody does it that way, and I think there's there's nothing wrong with going a simple approach. But in the back of my head, there's always part of me that's like, I should figure out some way to make this more interesting. You know, more engaging, more more. Maybe quirky. It might be the right right word to be used here, but like different. And I and I think I struggle a lot with figuring out how to do that with uh, like an anime show, movie, or TV show or movie uh, in general, where I think things like uh, video games and comic, you know, manga, like we'll we'll see pretty soon, where the way they're structured. And the way they're kind of designed and what you have access to uh, tools wise that can be used uh, with those like, um, you know, with those particular you know, pieces of media are a lot easier to be a lot more creative with, which is something I really appreciate. And especially for uh, the next project, um, it's going to involve, you know, a lot more creative um, approaches to visual stuff. Which I'm, you know, definitely gonna look forward to talking about a lot. I think more so, um, because there there isn't as much on this video because it's much more simple. 
besides you know the copyright claim bs i had to deal with later which we'll, we'll definitely get to um you know and then there's this kind of image which i think is i don't remember the the shadow being like that i thought i had that much lower um i guess not uh there was this color um green screen thing i had to use i don't remember what it covers i guess it covered like that uh as a way for me to put it on screen properly i guess i don't remember what happened here i i guess it's like i had the I don't know. Well, that, that seems weird. Why did I do that? Couldn't I have just cut this out? You know, as an individual piece and not have like the the you know, the the green screen. That's kind of the weird thing about making videos. It's just sometimes you do really weird stuff. And it, it is odd. And I think that's one of the reasons I and and sometimes you make things take way longer than they should. Like this should not this should be super easy to do. Just cut it out from like the Wikipedia. You can use like snip, like the, the snipping little features you have on Windows. Like it shouldn't be that hard. It's super simple, super easy. But for some reason, I wanted to do the fucking green screen for some reason. Which, you know, is kind of blowing my mind. Why? Why? Why did I want to do that? Uh, and I think. You know, the fact that this process can take a long time and sometimes it's just like I'm thinking and I'm thinking and I'm thinking and I'm trying to do something weird. Um, like while editing the video, it just takes way more time than necessary, I think is one of the reasons I, I've started to, after this project in particular, I started to storyboard a lot more. So I would have the, the visual stuff much more, um, you know, set up. And I already had like the ideas, you know, on paper that I would uh, incorporate and implement into the video. Granted, a lot of those storyboarded ideas sometimes change and sometimes aren't implemented in the, the way I had thought about it in my head. And sometimes that's because there's limitations on my own ability. And sometimes there's limitations in um, just kind of what I'm able to do with the program. And again, some of that's ability oriented. Some of that's just like there's, there's certain things that just aren't that just don't work that way and i just don't have the tools necessary to like get footage in a particular way uh, which can you know be a little bit odd and frustrating but usually usually it works out and then sometimes i just change the idea later that it's like I, I have a better one in my head or in some cases i'm really tired and it's just taking forever to do this one thing i had planned and it's just not worth it to take a full month or something on this like four minute clip. You know what I mean? It's just not worth it to go frame by frame by frame by frame for hours and hours and hours for like days um, that I have free, which is still limited um, to do that. And it just doesn't work very well. Um, and I, you know, it's just something you have to think about and work on and adapt to while working on it. Uh, with that being said, <laughs> Another little classic. Boom. I don't think I didn't have to do much for this because the music kind of synced up pretty well. I think it's here potentially. Uh, or actually, I guess it's probably those two places. Maybe. Uh, you know, that's fun. Uh, oh, actually. Uh, I do love this section. This worked out so well. We, we have the music. It's super timed out. For the little chapter segment, and then so you get to that frame, and then bam, obviously made in Photoshop. Um, from this like one frame, and it's just like, um, you know, edited. I think color, um, adjustment layer, or is it adjustment gradient map? I think it was gradient map. Um, to change the colors a little bit across the whole thing. Then there's text. I think I would probably approach a little bit differently in the future. Uh, but you know it's fine, and I think it's like I got the you know I was trying to look for the right footage to get um to make that clip, you know, make it seamless. Like bam, oh, that's a little pop. Uh, color difference uh for here, 
Uh, it might not be that one. I guess I used an adjustment layer to tint the color uh, to this. Probably made it a little easier on myself. Wow. Um, you know, a lot of it is is basic, and a lot of it is also just cutting things and fitting things in at the right time to kind of match up with my own script and kind of with what I'm doing so it doesn't look janky you know so it's not a cut in the middle of a sentence which just doesn't feel right and you know there's a lot of avoidance to that um, there's also this section which I had to fuck around with a lot because I just my script did not align with the amount of time that these clips lasted so it was just a bit Awkward. Um, but it, it seems to have worked out mostly. It's just sometimes it's weird. It's it is difficult sometimes where the footage just doesn't last long, and I have to make changes to like adapt. Um. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is this is the the first time I or first one I had to like make major edits to. Because otherwise it would get claimed. Um, and I I used um, so I made I think it was this one. Yeah, I I went and used After Effects to kind of edit the. At first I had the footage already kind of edited, so it's you have a more you know uh the the clean version. Also, still a little edited in more that CRT kind of filter like stuff, which is why it's cleaner here. Oh, and then it's like zoomed in, um, and a bit, you know, iffy in order to make sure you're you're able to, you know, footage just blocked out to some extent with the, the manga panels, although colored manga panels, which is nice. Uh, so you can still kind of like have the scene there. In, in a way that looks kind of interesting, at least uh, was the utilization of the panels. Um, so um, obviously, you know, tough part about Premiere is, you know, I would have to like load everything, which should be fair. Sometimes, maybe I should have done that beforehand. So we could just look at it without having to drop the quality. Um, but sometimes it's hard. Um, Oh, okay, there. Uh, does it all leave? I thought I was... I don't know, I thought I did a lot more editing-wise for that, but I guess not. Um, but again, it's the manga panels kind of like... Co-line was, uh, or line was the scene we're watching, or scene that was used. Because I can't really show the scene, and even if I do edit it, it's still screwed. So I have to block it out. Uh, which worked out. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't apply to everything because it's just very specific on which uh, mostly it's like anything that just plays in like a full clip, and that's kind of where the problem arises. Um, so I had to change that, and uh, we'll get to a better version of the show for editing wise. Uh, there's the ah, uh, here it is approach, it wasn't very effective. Uh, I think, man, I, I. I wish I used the sound effect for this so bad. It would have been ah, just a small light one. I think I talked about in the self analysis as well, where I I was thinking, oh, maybe I should use a sound effect. It would have been better here. And I think that there is an argument to be made for not using it, and an argument to be made for using it. I think if it was just very, I think the best of both worlds is is like a you know light one, you know, not a loud one, where it's like do -do -do -do, you know whatever. Uh, but like, you know, light, you can hear it, but it doesn't like power or overpower anything else that's being said or, you know, this like, kind of more, um, maybe somber might be the right word, uh, part of the story. And then you have the music kind of timed pretty strongly, but gets hit in the process. I wonder if I would have held that for longer, to be honest. Uh, have it, the music go a little, little tiny bit longer uh, before it cuts out. But I think fine. And then I didn't use a image for this one just because I thought this one was kind of like, you know, he's dead, right? Not the most 
you know, joy, joyful um, situation. So I didn't think it was right to do that. Plus, I mean, it was already on a black screen, and it's just you could fade it in, and you could fade everything else in after that. Um, I think it was a lot simpler, and I think it works for what it is. Uh, luckily, I didn't have to edit this scene as hard. This one didn't really get this. This one actually didn't get flagged at all. Um, this part. Uh, the next part does though, which is why I had to, you know, make those changes again. Although these these panels are a lot more um animated. But in the end, Yusuke says that he's fine. He confidently is, thinks is that preferred. nothing good. Uh, you know, obviously, unfortunately, it's not gonna look how it does in the video because I didn't. You know, there's a way you can render it in Premiere and it'll have all this green instead of red. Uh, and that lets you just pretty much watch the whole thing full quality as long as you don't make any changes, uh, which is nice. It would come from him coming back to life. Yeah, so Everyone you know a lot more visuals. If you've seen the video, you know, you'll know. Um, Everyone must be relieved that he's dead and his mom would have an easier time now. Uh, again. Locked out. Um, oh, here we go. And then we get to this section. I, I did like this part. This was a bit difficult to figure out. Uh, so you have the main footage, you know, coming out like that, and then it zooms in. I think using transform. Yeah, yeah. It zooms in in that moment, right? Right. And it has the the blur as well, or this is you know you, you shutter angle. Uh, don't even think about the angle and then comes in, matches up with kind of the next frame. Although I did have to use that wave warp, uh, out and in one, um, and then you get this section. And then this is where everything had to be heavily edited because this was like the most claimed it got, just because I think it's because the footage goes on because it wasn't an audio claim, it was a visual claim, so audio could be fine. But visually, it had to be heavily edited. And for this section, I'm going to move all the way to the end. When we get to the completion of the episode. Um, but I can go to After Effects here, which After Effects is the greatest thing ever. It's it's your best friend uh, for a lot of the cool visual stuff <coughs> that you can do. Uh, although it can be much harder to play. So I'm going to do this and hopefully it works. And isn't annoying. Sometimes it is annoying, um, but for here, I I made active use of panels across the board because again, uh, even just like the the process was weird because at first I was like, okay, I can have it in color and I'll use the panels to block it out, and then that didn't work, uh, and then I was like, okay, well, you know, eventually, you know, it was just a lot of okay, CRT filter, make it green, didn't work. Uh, and eventually we found, I found the idea that, okay, well, here, if I make it white and I blend it into a white background so it's hard to see, although you can definitely still see it, uh, I think, like, pretty clearly. Like, you know what's happening. You can see the things on the screen. Uh, but luckily, the fake, you know, little computer claim thing that doesn't, is not able to effectively see this. So the false, you know, little claim doesn't work, which is nice. You know, it works out. And so here it's just I wanted the panels to show uh, a bit. You know, they fade in and out. And there's the, the text on screen also is something I had to do. Uh, I think it's here. No, it's in part one and part two text. Um, so it's just going to come on. Um, and then you have all the kind of PNG paneling images. Uh, there's the footage without text. You know, take it away. Footage is gone. A background that's a black background. Uh, the black background is worthless. It, <clears throat> it's not really there. Because the white background's there the whole time, as you can, you can see. Um, and then we kind of can go through it, and then we have like, you know, Yusuke in a large text, which I think really tried. I wanted to try to over, like, really emphasize, you know, how she's feeling that moment where she's just like, yeah, it's great. Um, you know, really great, I think, active use. Uh, and then there's, uh, I don't remember, this fade in. 
of what's happening because the the, the the Kurabara footage in particular got heavily claimed like all over the place. This is one of the two that got just kept getting over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And so it's just like that's why it's like it doesn't really show as much here. Uh, footage wise, like this stuff would just get over and over and over. Sorry, I'm yawning again. Uh, it's over and over and over again. It was so frustrating. I hated it so much. Um, I, 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 it, it does, it made, I think it's just made everything so much harder in like a lot of the motivation you have to make, you know, these, these, the projects, you know, that I had to make these projects. It's just, it kind of dies, you know, more and more. Whereas this whole bullshit copyright garbage. And it's just pretty disgusting to deal with. And just in itself is awful. Um, so I had to use a lot of white just, to, and it's just like it's really frustrating as well because it's just you you want to be able to utilize these scenes for what you know, uh, for the video to have that major effect to show why this episode is really good. You know, the show kind of like th this is like what all the episode has been building towards. And let me let me show it to you as we because uh, I I there's no way to fully explain it in a way that does it justice because. Know, it really is something you just have to experience. And obviously, you know, you can watch the whole episode, which is great, right? And this is kind of this video's whole kind of point is to get you to watch said video or said episode. Um, but it is frustrating. Then it switches to the second one. Um, a little white. Oh, luckily, I mean, the, the chapter is like, you know, I probably could have used the original colors for the chapter. And that would have, I think, blended into the, you know, the white a lot better. But I don't know. I had access to color, and I was like, "Oh, color, cool, 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 cool. I'll, I'll use color." Um, you know, yeah, it still works out. And it's just like a lot of more basic stuff, visually, and it's just kind of timing things out, and just kind of like trying to match up where it is in the in the in the footage. With what happens in the manga, although it is different, obviously there's just different context a little bit. You know, script's different to some degree. I mean, English for sure. All right, it's kind of like the end of that little section. Uh, don't save. Oh. Um. Okay, we're back. And you know, we get to this last little section, which is you know, accumulation of the episode again. Uh, we have this full-on CRT weird footage. And we're kind of like going backwards. Just that was kind of an interesting idea. Where it's um sometimes to do that, where you just show the full thing. Because I mean, it is like I think I would change this and try to fix it up because you can see like it comes off at the sides. And I, I did figure out actually a way to deal with that, but I, I think I missed this one, um, largely because I I did not want to do this anymore. And I want to move on and do something different and upload it and just not deal with it anymore because it was super frustrating. And I want to move on. I have, uh, you know, other projects keep moving forward. Maybe one day we'll come back to it, fix it up. You know, copyright will be dealt with. Ah, uh, but it's fine. Uh, and then I think a lot of this is just again just blatant footage. It was white uh, to get the pad pass and copyright claim. Then you have the little credits, which is very basic. You know, we have the um the thumbnail, which kind of blends into the greenness, to be honest. Uh, it's a little weird. Uh, it always looks weird visually because it blends in with that green background, but it's not actually, you know what I mean? It's just, like, look closely, and it's like, oh, what the? <laughs> just kind of feels weird. Uh, there's the credits, which are showed in, like, the kind of you know, blend away. Uh, use footage from, uh, I think it was, like, episode five. Uh, when you get back to life. Spoilers. Um, and then you have don't die, super important. And then you have bang. Um, I think it's really like obviously there's, you know, uh, this behind the scenes doesn't really have like there's not really a lot to talk about because there's a lot of the stuff that I did is you know very basic. It's, you know, use footage at the right moment. You know, cut it at the right moment. You know, try not to like interrupt your your own script and your words. You want to cut near the end. You want to cut like each sentence sometimes. Although there's some like you know circumstances where you kind of fade in while you're talking, and uh, you know stuff like that. And you want to be careful like how much you're doing like 
repetition, I think, is something that's been mine when you're kind of working on videos like this or videos in general. You don't want to necessarily do the same thing over and over and over and over again. At least in my head, that's how I process it. Um, but it's also just there's not really a lot to talk about behind the scenes visually because it is it is very basic. Um, a lot of the time, besides like title card stuff, which you know I love the title cards, uh, but it does improve, I think, pretty heavily in like the next project. And there's just a lot of things, you know. I keep talking about the next project a lot. And I probably shouldn't do that as much. But I think it's just the next project is is a major step up in a variety of aspects, especially in the visual department, which I think is going to be a pretty mainstay in regards to quality as time goes on. For sure, I would hope. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's hard. But I think um, there's a lot of things. Um... I think the important thing was this video, the behind the scenes, and 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 this project in general, is, you know, it's 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 kind of it's the first step, you know. It, I I have problems with, you know, obviously a lot of the edits that had to be made, which is really frustrating. I have issues with script, obviously, because I'm extremely self critical. Um. But but I think it's a first step, and I think looking at it and critiquing it and analyzing it and like kind of looking at why I made certain decisions and, you know, what's good and what I liked and what I think is going to be very much further improved on is, is, is important to me. And I, I want to make sure I, I do this uh, for myself. And I think it's good to potentially have that outlook uh, to look at when you, you know, for other people who might be interested in, you know, how these videos are made, what's the thought process. Um, you know, this is mine. Uh, there, there, there's some music choices I could have gone over, but it's just like, I can't, uh, it's just usually for me, it's whatever feels right. You know, and I try to use a lot of the Yu Yu Hakusho soundtrack for this, for example. And it's just hard not to really go much further than, than that. But, you know, that's okay. Um, I think I can appreciate what this video is. I can appreciate that I think this is kind of definitely the starting point for a lot of the stuff I end up doing. I think this is the starting point for my own criticism on what I haven't done and things that can just be that I, that I want to further improve on. Like the, the visual stuff I keep bringing back um, and not using the footage in a, a way that I think is basic and plain. Because I think in, in utilizing the footage in a simple way is fine. I think it really works. I think it works for what we're talking about. But uh, at the same time, I want to do something more with it. And by this point, when I was making this video, I had not found that solution. And I think even today, making this this behind the scenes, you know, months after I've completed the the original draft, you know, and only you know. It's it's been uploaded for a couple of weeks now, which is great. But it, it, it the main main thing to think about, I think, is improvement, and that's just what I want to keep seeing, regardless of how many people watch, how many people are, you know, interested in potentially behind the scenes or self analysis stuff, which is fine. Uh, I think my ability for behind the scenes and self analysis is you know, limited, I, like, like this video I'm thinking about is, I mean, it's limited. There, again, there's not much I can talk about. There's some stuff I can, but in my head, it's like, okay, well, there's not really much of interest that I can really engage with because a lot of it is very simple and plain and there isn't really anything that's like super, you know, out there to look at. Besides basic stuff. Like, I think execution wise, for a lot of the visual stuff in this video, despite it, you know, being simple, plain is fine. But I think the stuff I really want to analyze and move forward with are not here yet. Because it's only through this video that I, that I made the interest. Or that I have interest or I had interest in doing those weirder, more unique 
very visually stylized thing that started here, at least in regards to thought process. And that's just kind of what the, you know, what the, just how projects are. And, you know, I'm, I'm still glad for this one. Uh, anyway, um, as odd as it seems, I went on a lot of rambling. Uh, I don't know if it's enjoyable or not. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Uh, regardless, I think these videos are primarily for me. And if other people find enjoyment, that's awesome. That's great. Um, but the videos for you guys are like the more major projects, I think. And these, these weird ones, self-analysis behind the scenes are more so re-recording my own thoughts for how I feel about these projects. Um, maybe one day, uh, I think it's possible we'll do, we'll look at the Roy video, I think, as well. Just because I think there's a potential that I'm going to need a little bit more time for the, the third project. Although I'm not sure yet. Uh, so if I do need it, then it's like, okay, well, you know, I'll, I can potentially start looking at that a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see where things go. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for watching the actual video itself, even though it had like those weird uh, edit changes that I were really frustrating for me. Um, thank you again.